All right, everyone. So uh, the, the thing that I want to do with our project is to be able to let people customize it a little bit. So if you open the index file in Notepad, and then you can, uh, you can run it. My idea is that I'm going to have the ability for people to input their name to customize the project. So again, this is like the example that we've been working toward the whole uh, semester. But I'm thinking in the About SDCE pop-up screen here, we've got Get Directions, and then we've also got a little space where, I will, where we will put in a button for uh, customizing the app. And what I want to do is when someone types in their name, I want that name to then appear in different parts of the app. So that would be a good way to keep it customized. Uh, so taking in the person's name. Uh, that, that's going to require some JavaScript, and it's going to require a little bit of what we've seen already before, namely that JavaScript prompt command. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll capture that name and then display it on screen. So we've kind of done something like that already. But the big difference now is that we are going to capture this name and, and keep it more permanent. As in, you can close completely the web browser and open the project again, and then your name will still be there. Um, that's what I want to do. I, I want to store a name more permanently because a variable, a plain old VAR, a variable, uh, only works as long as you've got the project open. Once you close that web page, that app, it would forget everything in the variable. So we'll see an HTML5 construct that will allow us to save data more permanently. We do have to do one thing, and it's just in this, uh, in this lab. Uh, in this lab, even though we already have the software Deep Freeze, which forgets everything that you did once you restart the computer, for some reason also our Firefox has an option turned on that most people will not have, which is to eliminate all cached data. So for us, it's a detriment because then this won't work, even though we'll, even though we'll write the code properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix a little thing in Firefox that only on these computers did they change. On your own home computer, you won't have to deal with this, but it might be nice to know about this anyway. So I'm going to load Firefox. Just load up the project in Firefox. And we've got a menu item somewhere that I need to remember where to look at it again. Um, you're in Firefox, and then you can go up to the Tools menu. We're going to edit some options of Firefox. We won't have to deal with this. We will not have to deal with this with Chrome and the other browsers, I think. But since we're using Firefox, this is the one that's uh, changed. The defaults are changed, and they're going to be detrimental to us. So in Firefox, click on Tools at the top, and then click on Options. And um, I, I think it's this one here, uh, where it should be in the tab of privacy. And it says history. Firefox will never remember history. So that's what is going to get in our way with what we're trying to do right now. So we're going to change that. The default would be remember history. When you install Firefox for the first time, the default option is remember history. It'll ask you to restart, so go ahead and click OK. Firefox should restart, hopefully. Nothing really seemed to have changed, but this is something that has happened in previous semesters where we do what we're about to do, and then uh, everything looks great. We try it out, and then it doesn't work. Very anticlimactic. And then we figured out, oh, um, no history is being saved in Firefox. So that should, that should fix it there. <clears throat> so we're going to work on that index file. In just a moment, I want to back up and go back to that plain old JavaScript uh, file that we worked with, that plain old file that we worked with previously 
just to learn about JavaScript. It's, it's if you don't have it, it's back in the network drive. Let's see, it was the one. If you need a copy of it, you probably have a copy of it, but it's called 2015-06-25 JavaScript Basics. We just need a, a very, very basic file. It doesn't matter if it's not complete. I just don't want to show you what I'm going to show you on our main index file because we've got a lot to work with, and I just want to focus in on these concepts, and then we'll apply it to the main project. So load up that JavaScript basics file in Notepad. Okay. So if you have that JavaScript file, um, we have a spot here on line 16, var. We created a variable, called it thing1 then it's filled subsequently with different things. Here it's filled with the number 1, line 17, then it's filled in addition the number 100, so it becomes thing 101, and then up on the top on the hello pop-up, line 11, then it's filled with the result of whatever the person writes in the prompt. So thing 1 then is filled with the person's name. So we've seen that before, but the problem is that if I add my name to this, like I just did, there's my name, let's say, well, my real name here. So I add my name, and then let's say I open the file again. Uh, my name wouldn't be there anymore. The variable is cleaned out. It's reset. It doesn't store the name between sessions. I had it open. I closed it. I opened it again. My name is no longer saved there the variable is cleaned out. So what we're going to do is look at some brand new HTML5 goodness. This is something called local storage. So up on your web browser, to learn a little bit about it, let's look up HTML5 local storage. So search local HTML5 local storage, and I'm going to look again at the W3Schools tutorial. These other ones are also good, but I'm sure um, I'm sure they're, they're all good and they might give you different examples and such, but they all have the same sort of idea. So let's load W3Schools HTML5 web storage. Here they call it web storage, local storage. It's kind of interchangeable. Technically it's different, but most commonly I see it referred to as local storage. So let's go to the W3Schools tutorial. I'll explain it a bit and then we'll apply it. With local storage, web applications can store data locally within the user's browser. Before HTML5, apps app data had to be stored in cookies, including every server request. Local storage is more secure, and large amounts of data can be stored locally without affecting website performance. Unlike cookies, the storage limit is far greater, at least 5 megabytes, and information is never transferred to the server. Local storage is per domain. All pages from one domain can store and access the same data. So kind of technical there, but the main idea is that we'll be able to save a variable in a sense, a cookie in a sense, saving it technically to the web browser, not to a server, therefore it's cutting down on response time in that it's not accessing a server to pull the data, it's storing it within the web browser. Um, we can add to it, we can remove from it, we can delete the data. It's very simple. It's not like a database, really. It's just a very simple flat one-to-one -one type of data, a key-value pair, as we'll see. And we see that in different versions of the web, web browsers, it's accessible. So this will also apply to us when we're talking about um, the Android project. So we've got basically two things, local storage, session storage. Stores data with no expiration date is the local storage. Session storage stores data for one session. Data is lost when the tab is closed. That's sort of like the traditional variable. So that, ha that might have some uses. For us it won't be very useful. What will be useful is local storage, the one that is more permanent. 
Here, there's a little bit of JavaScript to check. Let's check if our web browser is capable of using local storage, because it's an HTML5 feature. And therefore, if someone visited our project using Chrome 4.0, which probably came out about, I don't know, four years ago, um, it might not work. If someone came to our site in Internet Explorer 8, it might not work. You know, those poor Windows XP people coming to our site, it's not going to work for them, perhaps. And Firefox 3.5, that was out, I don't know, seven years ago also. So um, this is HTML5. It works on newer browsers, and it'll be fine for us to use. But notice the code here basically is saying, if else. And again, in the next class, we'll talk more about conditional statements. This is basically checking true or false. And it's checking if we do not have undefined local storage, Again, it's kind of backwards, like when you vote for, uh, when those propositions come up on the ballot, and it says, a vote for yes will not fund that project, or vice versa. Uh, a vote no will yes leave that law alone. You know, when you vote in that, and it's all backwards like that sometimes, that's sort of happening here. Type of storage is not undefined. So we're saying, if, if, um, if we do have the ability basically, to use local storage, then our code goes here and works just fine. If the web browser doesn't have the ability to use local storage, then do something else, like maybe display on screen or ignore the code or something. But we'll see more of these conditional statements later, how it actually works. The local storage object it stores data with no expiration. The data will not be deleted when the browser uh, is closed and we will be available next day, next week, next year. It's permanent. Notice the way it works. Local storage, capital S, under storage, dot set item, open close parentheses, then it has two parameters, last name and Smith. This is what is known as a key value pair. The key is last name, the value is pair. So if I wanted to store user information based on last name, that's my key, and then I add to the, it the value Smith. Then I could uh, further write last name, comma, Jones, last name, comma, um, Vasquez, etc. So we have this, basically the name of the cookie and what's in the cookie. To retrieve it, just see the... the, see the uh, the part at the end, they made it a little more complicated than necessary. To retrieve it, it's this part at the end here. Local storage dot get item, last name. So we're just saying, give me the value inside of that key. Give me the value of that cookie. And then we should recognize this equals, so whatever value is inside of last name, in this case is Smith, put it inside of the um, the div on screen called result change its inner HTML to say the name Smith. So basically display the name Smith on screen. So set item, get item. And it explains, creates a local uh, storage name value pair with last name, with name or key last name and value Smith, retrieves it, and then inserts it into the ID. Um, there's also another way to do it, the way that we're going to do it, because it's a little bit of a time saver. Storing. Local storage dot last name equals Smith. Or local storage dot last name. The big difference here is, notice the top and the bottom. We could write local storage dot set item, the name of the cookie, and then the value in the cookie. Or we could write local storage, the name of the cookie equals the value. We're going to do it that way because it's more compact. It works the same as the other. We're going to save some typing and therefore save perhaps some misspelling issues. And with retrieving, it's very similar. Up here we have local storage dot get item, which item? Last name. We're going to do instead simply local storage, the item. And it'll retrieve the value. And again, it's being displayed on screen. Syntax for removing last name, local storage item, is local storage.remove item, which item? Last name. So 
saving a variable in a sense, retrieving that variable, deleting that variable. It's more of a permanent type of variable. If you have a little bit more experience in this kind of stuff, take a note here. Name and value or key and value pairs are always stored as strings. Remember to convert them to another format when needed. That means if you've got some experience, a variable can hold a number or a word, and a word is a string, so a number is different than a word. And what we're saying here is that even if we add a number to the local storage object, it's going to save it as a string. So it's going to look like a 1, but it's not a 1. It looks like a 1 only. What does that mean? We'll get to that more in detail a little later. Following example counts the number of times a user has clicked the button. In the code, the value string is converted to a number to be able to increase the counter. So what's going on here is um, there is local storage .click count. If the click count local storage object exists, then we are going to increment it by one. But first, it has to be converted into a number. So the number one here might not be the number one. It might be the thing that looks like number one. Uh, or else, if there is no click count local storage object, instead go ahead and create it and put the number one into it, or the string one. And then on screen, it'll say, you have clicked the button. It'll retrieve how many current clicks there are and display it on screen. And it doesn't have to be converted back to a number because it's just being displayed. Session storage, we're not going to worry about that again because it's too temporary for us. So we're going to use then, we're going to do this, a little bit of this in the, in our, in our JavaScript file. So let's go back to our JavaScript. Let's go over to, let's create a new line 29. We'll write login. We'll make that a link, a dummy link. We'll have an on click. So I'm just basically doing what we did previously. A link, a word, href to nowhere, <coughs> on click. We're going to define a function in a moment. Let's go ahead and write that. What I want to happen is we click that. It's going to capture the name, display it on screen. OK, almost exactly as we've done before. But the big difference will be then we will close the web browser. We will load the same file, and we will see that the variable the local storage object still has our original name. So we want to do a couple of things here. A placeholder to display this on screen, just like line 28. We'll create a div, it's empty. We'll give it an ID. Uh, we'll call it uh, login name. So now we've got a placeholder here that will display whatever the person's, um, whatever their, um, whatever they, they write as their name. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll go back up to the script section and now start to write um, some code so that we capture that name and save it more permanently. We'll do this. So uh, we'll go back to line 20. Give yourself a new line 20. A uh, couple of spaces, actually. I'm going to put it down to 21. And uh, maybe I'll write myself a note here. Local storage practice. So what follows is local storage practice. The first thing I want to do is I want to define this function that runs once, 
well, let's do it like this. Let's say we will create first this local storage object, this, this container that is a little more permanent. So uh, we don't have to precede it with the VAR uh, keyword. It's not a variable. We just simply need to start to write local storage dot. We need to say, we need to make up here the name of a variable in a sense. So we can call it uh, the username. Semicolon. So the syntax is a little different than we've seen before. There's no var keyword. The keyword is local storage. But notice it's written local storage dot. And then what is this particular variable, the local storage object? We didn't fill it with anything at the moment. We just created it. Next line we'll say console.log. I want to display, I want to have some console output, which will help me figure out what I'm doing. And I want it then to display what's in that in that local storage object. Local storage dot the username. So let's save this and run it in Firefox. Let's load the console. Let's see what sort of feedback we get. Before we do anything, we've still got some things to do, of course, but let's just see at this point what kind of feedback we get. So save and run that. Load the console. Remember, right click, inspect element, and then select the console. So I'm running in Firefox. I'm going to right-click, inspect element, console, undefined. So, okay, we've created this local storage object, but we haven't done anything with it. Therefore, it's undefined. So far, so good. Did you get thing one? No, uh, the code. The code. Okay. Okay, so um, we get undefined. I'm just showing you here. This is sort of for before and after. Right now, before we fill this local storage object with anything, it's undefined. So what we want to fill it with is when someone types, um, uh, when someone types their name. Before uh, we go further, though, simply it saying undefined for right now kind of works, but as we get more complicated, we're going to forget, why does that say undefined again? So I usually, what I do is I make it say a little bit of text to explain what I'm trying to show in the console. So in the console.log, instead, let's write in quotes, open quote, end quote, space plus. I want to write some word there, some string. I want to write some string and then whatever is in the local storage object. So notice the syntax for that. In quotes, this is going to be some sentence that I can write that will not be code. It'll be human readable. We have the plus, which is concatenation, which is basically whatever we write in the, in the, in the quotes, show that, and then show what's next. I want to say uh, local storage is currently colon space. That space is useful there because it, if without that space, it'll display what's in there right next to the colon. But if you put a space or as many as you want, those will literally show up. It's a string. Whatever's in the quotes will show up exactly as is in the console. So save it and run it again. Or you can just refresh your web browser. Check your console output. You should say local storage is currently undefined.
Right, so whatever I put in the quotes appears exactly as is in the console. Local storage is currently undefined. Next line, we will define that function. So we'll type the keyword function, and we called it down here. Oh, we haven't called it anything yet, so we'll oh, we'll call it get login. Open close parentheses, open curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace, semicolon. So we're defining get function, get loan I mean, with function. Uh, here we'll do it eventually. You might see on click that will then say on click get login. We'll do that in a bit. But this function is going to define capturing the name, storing it in local storage, and then displaying it on screen. Within the function then we will say uh, local storage dot the username equals prompt open close parentheses and whatever message we want to appear um, on screen in the box in quotes we'll say um, username So a pop-up box will appear, a prompt, it'll say username, you'll type something, you'll click OK, and then the, uh, that value is captured, saved into the username. Next line, console.log, in quotes we'll say local storage is now, colon, space, outside of the quotes, plus local storage, the name of the local storage object, the user name. So this is the function that's going to capture the name, save the name permanently, display that name in the console for the moment, uh, but it won't execute if we save and run this because we haven't told it run get login. So back to the login link on click get login in parentheses or with parentheses get login open close parentheses semicolon this is on line 37. So now if we were to click on that link, it would execute the function get login. Get login, we just defined it. So save it and run it. Make sure your console is open. You'll get some feedback down there. And it should hopefully be the name that you just wrote. Let's see, I'm going to save that, I'm going to refresh this. It still tells me undefined, that's fine. I'll click Login, click OK. My console says, Local Storage is now Victor. It doesn't display on screen yet, we haven't gotten that far. OK, I'll click Login again. John, OK. Local Storage is now John. I'm going to close the web browser completely. I'm going to run it again. Open the console. I haven't clicked on login yet. Open the console. Local storage is currently John. You remember the very last name that I typed in. Local storage is now Juan. So I'll close that. 
Run it again from scratch completely. Check the console. Local storage is currently Juan. That would not have worked if it was a plain old variable. It would forget. Raise your hand if it worked. So it didn't work for anyone. One person at least. Ten points. Anyone need a little help?
So the people who are going to come out of the city 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 Thank you. 
just yet, but that's going to be a place for this week. It's going to be a little bit of a name for some of the things we need to come to. Did everyone get a chance to sign in? Here's the sign in sheet. All right, let's move on then. If this worked, if this worked, that's good. What's happening here is, as I've also shown and, and as you've seen, if you then close your browser completely and load it again, you will see that the local storage object is still saving your name. It might seem minor, but uh, uh, this is pretty major because this is kind of like a cookie, but as we saw in the documentation, it's better because it can store more data. It's saved locally to the browser, therefore it could have faster retrieval. And so it's going to be pretty useful for what we're about to do in just a moment. Uh, this is only displaying on screen, but um, I mean, it's displaying in the console. We want it to display on screen. So that's why we've got this little div placeholder. Line 38 has that placeholder to display the login name, but we're not using it yet. So we'll go back to our function, and furthermore, after the console log output, we'll say also show this on screen. So new line 27, uh, we need to then uh, get a reference to that div from, from, the, um, from the screen so that we can display it. That was our good old document dot get element capital E by capital B ID only capital I document dot get element by ID open close parentheses which element the one that's down here this placeholder waiting for us it's an ID in quotes in quotes inside of those parentheses, then I write the name of this ID, login name, exactly that way with capitals. At the end, dot inner, and then in all capitals, HTML equals. So all of that long phrase is just basically saying, we're going to fill this placeholder with something. And the something is a local storage object. So local storage, capital S, remember, dot the name of the particular local storage object we're dealing with, the username, capital N. Save and run that. And what should happen is it doesn't display on screen yet. We never told it that. But try then to click the login button again, put in another name, and then when you click OK, the name should then appear. So let's see. Click login. Click OK. There's the word Ben, the name Ben. And that's what line uh, 27 is saying. Now, on screen, we have a placeholder called login name. Let's change what's inside of it to what's inside of the variable, the local storage object, the username. Now, just like many things that we deal with when there's user input, not even, not always, even when there's user input, when there's any interaction, interactivity, there should be some sort of error checking. Are we getting uh, the input that I expected? That's one thing to deal with. Is a certain condition active in order for something else to happen? This is why the debugging aspect of, of a project often can be pretty time-consuming because you have to 
try to figure out all the possibilities of a failure point. And that's why oftentimes open source software is, can be very good because there's so many people looking at it, so many people looking at these errors and bugs and reporting issues and trying to squash the problems. So what I'm getting at is I would like the name, I would like the last name that appeared um, to load up as soon as, the last name that someone typed, to load up as soon as the, the site appears. And we can write that pretty easily, but that assumes that there has been already at least a name added one time. If there is no name added, we saw at the very beginning that we got local storage is currently undefined. So that's why we did that test first, to get you to think. When there was no local storage object defined, we get that undefined. And if we tried if this was our app and it was running the very first time before anyone put in their name, it would say welcome undefined if we never dealt with that. Next time when they typed in their name, then it would say welcome John. But then there would be that little bit of, you know, rough around the edges. Roughness around the edges. So I want to display the name that was last captured on screen, but I should also include a little bit of a test to check. Um, is there uh, is there a name, first of all, to, to speak of? So let's deal with that. And this is going to segue us basically into what we need to do with our project, our main project. Um, after the function of getLogin, we're going to create a new function. We can call it load name. Open close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace semicolon. So that's our skeleton when we're creating functions. Keyword function, what's the name of our function? Parentheses. Open close curly braces and everything in the curly braces then defines this function. This command. What I want is as soon as this web page loads, I want the last name to display on screen. But I already know I want to check does a name even exist? This is when if else comes in. We'll get to it in more detail, but simply just follow along here. Inside of the function, we'll write if, open close parentheses, space, open curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace, space on the same line, else, space, open curly brace, close curly brace. if else. There's going to be a part that checks if something is true. If that something is true, it will execute what's within the first pair of curly braces. If it's not true, then it'll execute what's in the else section. It's always checking for truth. If it is true, do the first part. Or else it wasn't true, it failed, so do the second part. We saw that when we first uh, tried to retrieve the local storage object, it said undefined. So we're going to check. If the local storage ob object is undefined, then don't display a name yet, because there's no name. Or else, then, there must be a name. So let's display the name. So we'll write inside of the if, parentheses, local storage dot the username. I want to check that what's inside of that variable, if it's a if it's an undefined, and in this case to check actual equality, such as does one equal one? Yes. Does cat equal cat? Yes. I want to check equality. Is it the same thing? Uh, we use double equal symbol. No spaces there. It's equal equal. Just type equal equal, not equal space equal. That is nothing. You want to type equal, equal. That means check. Is the thing on the left the same as the thing on the right? That's different than a single equal, which will be put the thing on the right into the thing on the left. Double equals would be is the thing on the left uh, the same as the thing on the right? 
And the thing on the right that I'm trying to check for is undefined. If the username is full of undefined, if the value of username, the username is undefined, then we'll execute what's inside of the first curly braces, which actually is nothing. Nothing will happen. There's no name captured. Don't display it on screen. The placeholder is still there. Do nothing. And notice that's a comment. There's no executable code here. Just a comment. Nothing happens. Nothing, nothing happens because no name. It's a comment. Well, the two possibilities are there is either a name or there is not a name. We've already dealt with there's not a name. So the part about dealing there is a name happens in else. So if there is a name, display it on screen, which is basically the line up here, which you can copy and paste. You can save some time there. The line that actually displays it, document, document element by ID, login name, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to copy that whole line and paste it into else. Copy line 27 and paste it to 34. So this is the function that would check, is there a name? If there is, display it on screen. If there's no name, don't display it. But again, it's a function that needs to be executed. It needs to be triggered. Nothing on, nothing yet has said to actually execute it. So we need to call its name, load name. And uh, we need to either call it up in the head or down in the body. Um, we need to put it in the body because we need to have the div visible first to be able to display the name. Remember we saw that little quirk previously. So what I'm getting at is uh, we need to go into the body, line 48, and add a script here, a script pair. And run load name. Running it means calling the name of the function that we defined right there. So at the end, before the end of body, a script pair. Run the JavaScript load name. What does load name mean? It jumps back up to here. Load name means check if there's no name. If there's no name, okay, ignore it. Or else there is a name, show it on screen. So now save it and run it, and you should see that the name now appears on screen as soon as you load the code. If it didn't quite work, check your spelling. Load name, capital N. There you go. So the very last name I wrote was Ben. I'll write a new name. Okay, new name. I'm going to close it run it again. Remember the last name. Another name. I've got a new name. I'm going to close the browser completely. I'm going to run it again. Remember the last name. And that's happening because of this. Load name. And because we're executing it here. Just because we wrote, just because we defined what load name is, we also then need to execute it. So if all of this worked, great. Perfect time for a break. If it didn't, we'll take a break and we'll figure it out. This general concept that we're looking here, we're about to then apply it right after the break to our app. To capture the person's name, to display it on screen, I need special consideration. 
to load the name automatically when you when they return to the app. We'll do that right after the break. 702, we'll be back at 712.